Now open. Mary, Our Lady of Peace Mausoleum in Flushing, New York. Secure your family's future with 10% down, no taxes, and 0% interest financing for up to 10 years on pre-need crypts and cremation niches starting at just $25 per month. Protect your loved ones with the gift of pre-planning. Visit them today at Mount St. Mary Cemetery. Call 718-353-1560. That's 718-353-1560. Or go to ccbklyn.org to learn more. That's ccbklyn.org. Over the course of human history, there's been Noah's Ark, Savior of Mankind. St. Francis of Assisi, foregoing his wealth to be savior of all animals. And Curtis Sliwa, guardian angel and savior of New York City, protecting both man and beast. The Curtis Sliwa Show presents Curtis's Ark with Nancy Sliwa. From bipeds to quadrupeds and everything in between. Now, with Nancy Sliwa, here's Curtis Sliwa. Wow. I never thought, Nancy, that the national election cycle would get down and come down to issues involving cats, dogs, doves, geese, goose, swans, and members of the animal community. And increasingly, it's become part of the vernacular. You didn't hear it four years ago with Biden and Trump. Almost no discussion about animal issues whatsoever. And now you hear it almost every day. As President Donald Trump says, he's traveling uh, to Springfield, Ohio. He's going to look into the allegations that the many illegal Haitians who have been brought in there have been snatching up dogs and cats, eating them, and uh, ducks and geese and swans. And then the Democrats have said, no, no, a thousand times no, they haven't done that at all. So this little town in the heartland of America is getting this extraordinary amount of attention about this one issue. Are they or are they not eating dogs, cats, ducks, doves, and goose and geese? This was President Donald Trump talking about uh, how he's going uh, to uh, Springfield, Ohio, in less than two weeks. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating They're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. Interesting. DeWine is the governor of Ohio. He's originally from outside of Springfield. He's a Republican. He says that's not happening. John Legend, the singer, who is actually from Springfield, originally born and raised there. He says it's not happening there. And yet, uh, last night when you joined me for the three hours from 12 to 3, we must have gotten four or five calls from the immediate area in and around Springfield. I guess talk radio there just does not exist or it has somehow, for some reason, avoided the subject. And they were telling us their perception of it, and they're telling us that it does exist. So... Give us a breakdown of everything we went through last night for about three hours in trying to determine whether you really think that these animals are being abused, tortured, killed, eaten, or that it's uh, just uh, Trump people just embellishing it and uh, trying to make it an issue in the remaining days of this national campaign. Well, first of all, I mean, certainly eating animals is nothing unusual to people. So, I mean, at that's it's not really shocking to say that it's pets. I I don't really think that's necessarily shocking either. Besides the fact that you obviously have a lot of different cultures and countries where it's not such a big deal to, you know, kill animals yourself if you're trying to eat them. There's also the poverty element. So if you're, you know, discussing maybe people who have limited resources and income, I mean there's reasons why people hunt and things like that. You know, potentially they're trying to get a food source now. The, re- the report that they were citing that seems to have, you know, 
I guess the confusion about is only really the location of it. It's not that it's it wasn't an actual incident that happened and it wasn't cited. I mean, it, it did. Like I, I was watching the videos, the body cam footage, all that stuff. It's just the location of it is off. So, yeah, this isn't uh, clearly this isn't the first time that people have made reference to that. I mean, it's it, again, I don't think it's really that uncommon to think that people are doing it. So, you know, I mean, I think now you kind of have this idea that, okay, we're, we're, we're putting it in one location, but it wasn't until 2018, believe it or not, that the United States even officially signed into law. It was President Trump at the time who signed it into law that it's illegal to eat cat meat in the United States. So it took us that long to formally acknowledge it. So I, again, I don't really think it's that mind boggling to think that these things do happen. It's just not something that, same like a lot of animal abuses, I mean, we don't really hear a lot of stories because it's something that we sweep under the rug. So I, I definitely wouldn't say it's it's any. And then the callers, the people who were calling in who live in the area, who were citing specific instances of having animals outdoors and then them disappearing relatively recently. So, yeah, I think it's possible. It is amazing that we have these officials, the city manager, the mayor, there acting that uh, stating that this does not occur. The governor of Ohio, DeWine, who is a Republican who grew up in that area, saying it does not occur. John Legend, who grew up in that area, saying it does not occur. And then we received a stream of calls all last night into the wee hours of the morning of people. They didn't seem like uh, they were trying to feed the beast and support the Trump campaign by embellishing what may have been one or two incidents it seemed to both you and I very genuine, the story that people were telling about how they were aware of how these animals in Springfield were being abused, were being taken uh, to be uh, cooked and prepared for food. We had a number of individuals who have cited that to be true. And uh, you say, well, why why are you denying it? It's, it we, we know that especially... Immigrants, migrants, illegal aliens are more prone to do these things. But I got to tell you, when I was a kid and we would go uh, roaming around areas of what were called the lots in Canarsie, not far from A.R. Bernard's megachurch, he hosts a program with uh, Rabbi Joe Potasnik Sunday mornings. There was a hobo jungle. These were white guys um, hobos have a tradition in America in which they would travel from place to place. They'd ride the rails, they'd set up a hobo camp, and it was the job of every hobo in the camp to go out and bring something for the evening stew. And oftentimes, they would rustle up animals. And the uh, king of the hobos, whoever was in charge of the hobo camp, because that's what they would call them, king of the hobos, would say, wait a second, where did you get that bird from? You realize if people are missing a bird, they're going to come to the hobo camp, they're going to blame us, and we're going to get a beatdown, we're going to get arrested, and they're going to burn down our hobo camp. So there was that, that, uh, that acknowledgement that some of the hobos who were all white at that time would do this, and that you couldn't do that or you would jeopardize the entire hobo camp. So now extrapolate it, you got 80,000 illegal aliens that you brought in, all of them from Haiti. I've been to Haiti. They do that in Haiti. Why wouldn't they do it here in the United States? What's the name of the person in charge of Haiti? Right now it's Barbecue, the gang member. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure anything goes. (laughs) You think they barbecue uh, animals there? Hell yes. Come on. I'm just saying there may, may be some dis- cultural distinctions we can't quite comprehend. Exactly. Especially when your leader is named Barbecue <laughs> because you're the number one gang member. But let me hear President Donald Trump again hear Matt Blaze, uh, what he was saying, because he is going to Springfield. He says he's going to get down to uh, dealing with this issue of pets being snatched up by Haitian uh, migrants and uh, put into sort of a hobo stew. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. 
Now, what I'm ready to do to remedy this, and Nancy is, as part of our animal welfare uh, program, as part of what we do with the Guardian Angels, with our animal pro, uh, welfare program that Nancy leads. Uh, and by the way, if people were interested in contacting you, Nancy, about this issue and so many other related animal welfare issues, how might they do that? Protectouranimals.org. So protectouranimals.org. That'll give you all the information you need to know about the animal welfare program that we guardian angels oversee. Nancy's the director of that. But I am willing to get the Cleveland guardian angels, who are about three hours away, to come into Springfield and to check things out for themselves as to whether this is being embellished, made up, uh, it has existed, maybe it no longer exists, but just to get a, a, a different set of eyes and ears on this that are not driven by politics, but just driven by whether they have been abused, whether they have been tortured, or whether they have been captured and then plucked and prepared for, for food. Now, that's one thing. And then I'll deal with the migrant issue because I know Haitians well in my home parish in Our Lady of Miracles in Canarsie now. The biggest mass on the weekends is the Creole mass because there are so many Haitians who have moved into Canarsie who are homeowners, but they are Roman Catholics. Now, some of them practice Roman Catholicism, the mass majority, and some of them are Catholics who occasionally dabble in voodoo. And there are acts of voodoo that require animal sacrifice. In our area, uh, there are a large number of people who go to botanica shops uh, they are generally in Hispanic neighborhoods. You'll find them in East Harlem, South Bronx. I walked into one the other day on Roosevelt Avenue in Corona when I was dealing there with the the open prostitution issue, and I saw that the place was packed, the Botanica. And that is a place where you will do worship of different types, and sometimes you will sacrifice animals, as was in 1999, a United States Supreme Court decision that protected Santeria priests and priestesses who were sacrificing animals in Hialeah, Florida, and saying it was part of their religious worship services. So it's actually protected by the United States Supreme Court. That's the other thing. We are going to uh, be helping the people in Howard Beach and Broad Channel because it's not just an issue in Springfield, Ohio, and other parts of the country. Uh, I and Nancy will be taking a trip there. We've been there before along Jamaica Bay. Apparently, there are groups of people who are snatching up the seagulls, trying to pluck their feathers and to cook them. And some women who are there to protect the seagulls, you see in some of the videos, they're grabbing the seagulls out of the illegal aliens' arms and saying, no, 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 leave that bird alone, leave that bird alone. And we know that there is some animal sacrifice going on as part of some kind of sort of bizarre worshipping that goes on near the shores of Jamaica Bay on both the Broad Channel side and the Howard Beach side, both New Howard Beach, Old Howard Beach, and yes, Hamilton Beach, the beach that most people don't know and think is a blender. It's not. It's a neighborhood right next to Old Howard Beach and next to JFK Airport. So we don't just talk about these animal welfare issues. We actually go out and try to help to the best of our ability. But feel free to call in now because this has been the talk of the nation. Um, there are people who are upset whenever Donald Trump or J.D. Vance talk about these issues, uh, animal sacrifice or animal killings or animals being snatched up and turned into food by the illegal aliens. And yet there are others who are saying, no, 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 let the truth be told. Let's, uh, let's try to prevent this from taking place. Let's put a cap on it. Our number is 1-800-848-9222. That's one 800 848 W-A-B-C. So you got a tag team here. You've got Nancy that will deal with the animal issues. I will deal with the migrant issues. We'll, to the best of our ability, try to bring to you what we think is happening in Springfield with the help of our Cleveland Guardian Angels who will be visiting. But we can put boots on the ground in Howard Beach and Broad Channel. We can go in there and stop what has clearly been a pattern of animal sacrifice and torture that some have claimed is part of their religious practice. 
Uh, I think I'm safe to say on behalf of both Nancy, myself, and the guardian angels that that's not going to be tolerated. Well, and and what was interesting, too, the some of the callers yesterday were mentioning that the media they have in their town is very limited, almost like non-existent. So they were listening to WABC to get more accurate information regarding what was going on in their town for, as a news source. So it kind of does stand to reason if they have something happening internally, maybe it just doesn't have the ability to get out the same way it does in a market like New York City. Absolutely. It was a tribute to WABC and the impact we have on all of America, the number one station, talk station by day, coast to coast, and the number one in the world at night. The people of Ohio were calling us saying they're getting more information from WABC yeah. than from any other outlet. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, due to uh, our hosts and hostesses prioritizing these things, recognizing that we don't just serve the greater New York, New Jersey community, that we are a national radio show that has an international audience now that can be heard in 177 countries when you download the WABC app, can be heard on the stream of your laptop computer and your worktop computer, and can be heard all over the world. Bigger than the BBC, one, two, three, four combined. I know I've been on all four of those shows, and I can tell you this, there's no free speech on the BBC, one, two, three, four, because when you're a guest, you're told, and don't you dare insult the royal family. If you do, and you do it in the UK, you're subject to being arrested. Fanable. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Wendy in Long Island. Your turn to be heard here on the animal welfare issue at WABC. Wendy? Yeah, hey there. Good evening, guys. So um, I was just wondering how prevalent you think um, animal sacrifices and the religion that, the, that maybe the Haitians are practicing in their own country, maybe they brought that to Springfield? Yeah, I, uh, when I was there in Port-au-Prince, this was after the earthquake. Uh, I did see instances after the fact where apparently animal sacrifice had taken place by a voodoo priest. I did not actually see it, but I saw the remnants of it. And the local people were telling us in Creole what had happened. The guy who was there was uh, one of my guardian angel leaders, Richard Dominique, who is no longer alive. Unfortunately, he passed away. He had grown up in Haiti. And uh, he said it was quite common. You could be a practitioner of the Roman Catholic faith, and that is the majority religion in Haiti, but also on the side be practicing voodoo. And part of the voodoo experience is animal sacrifice. So it is a part, not the majority of their uh, cultural practice, but it is a part that nobody can disavow and say it doesn't exist, Wendy. Well, maybe that's the root of where all of this conversation is coming from. It could well be. And that's why rather than people shouting at one another, let's, uh, let's find out what's true, what's not true. Uh, it doesn't indict the Haitian people because this is a part of their culture. There were other cultures who came to this country years ago that were involved in what we might consider bizarre practices that they uh, evolved out of uh, by the time that, you know, they, it was a generational thing. So um, I think th I think everybody is entitled to the truth, Wendy. Yeah, well, I think that I could safely say that that's an aspect that we don't we need to have an immigrant, truthfully. And can not we find some other immigrants that are a little closer to our culture? Well, now you got to understand, one of the reasons they're bringing the Haitians in is because it's part of four categories that the Biden administration have deemed to be untouchables. And that is because we don't have relationships with the country. So for number one, it's the Venezuelans. Maduro has no relationship with the United States. In fact, Nancy, you brought to our attention that the consulate that normally would be uber active because of the march of the dictators, tyrants, and despots to the General Assembly this week, it's already tying the city up in knots. If we went to the council building, describe it for our listeners and where it is in proximity to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah, it's right across 
the street from St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, I'm not sure which side street it is. It's not on the avenue, but it's a massive looking building, but that looks like it's been shuttered for years. So there is the signage of Venezuela uh, consulate, like, you know, some things on the, the windows about passports, but everything is, you know, like grayed out. And there's some of the, you know, the, the, the doors are actually boarded up. It, it looks like really, it looks like a place that was looted. It's a great big building. Right across from St. Patrick's Cathedral between 5th and uh, Madison on 50th, north of the north side of 50th Street. It's still flying the Venezuelan flag. Uh, you know, I'm curious, how come they haven't opened up that building for the Venezuelan migrants? Exactly. They would feel much more accustomed to be living in a building with a Venezuelan flag flying. Oh, it's a building. <laughs> oh, that's right. Wow. St. Patrick's Cathedral is across the street. But it's the Roman Catholic Church through the edicts of Pope Francis who have said it is a great sin yeah. not to welcome in illegal aliens. I don't think they they want to shelter right around the block from them. They'll probably spend all day in, in the <laughs> St. Patrick's Cathedral. No, 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 no. You're, you're right. It's a Venezuelan <laughs> building. It's boarded up. But the Venezuelan flag is still flying. That is a brilliant idea. Eric Adams is always looking for places to house uh, migrants, right? Put all the Venezuelans in their old consulate. And then they can go pray across the street. Hey, they are Roman Catholics. There you go. I mean, it's perfect. But they are part of the temporary protected status okay. that exists for Nicaraguans from Daniel Ortega's country, a totalitarian dictator now, Cuba, a totalitarian dictatorship, uh, Maduro and Venezuelan, a totalitarian dictatorship, but not Haiti because barbecue is in charge. It's anarchy that exists in Haiti. So a legal immigration status for people who cannot return safely to their country of origin, they are given a green card so they can work. Some have said they need the Haitians in Springfield and central Ohio to do the work because Americans are not willing to do that kind of work. I kind of understand that a bit because uh, I was with my youngest son earlier today at his soccer game, and I made a few recommendations like he wanted something. I said, why don't you get a freaking paper route, kid? And he goes, I'm not going to go out there and deliver papers. I want you to scrape the barnacles off your backside, get your rear in gear. Oh, but that's right. Our kids are not going to work the way some of us worked. And before that, even our parents and grandparents who worked even harder in their younger years. So we're going to need some of these workers. So it's not an easy question. It's not all one way. It's not the other way. But Nancy's going to do her part to uh, figure out what's going on with the animals. I'm going to do my part to try to figure out what's uh, happening with the migrants. And uh, by next Sunday, the Animal Welfare Hour, we will present our findings to all of our thousands of listeners. Oh, yeah. Let's go to Mark and Bayonne, the gateway to America. Your turn to be heard here at WABC, Mark. Hey, thank you, Curtis and Nancy. I, it, it, it's so funny. Uh, Nancy, do you know what cooey is? No. For, in the Dominican Republic, they eat guinea pigs. Uh. That pets we have. My first marriage, you know, 40 years ago, my, my wife had six of these guinea pigs. I worked with a guy in Bayonne for 10 years. He invited me over and I'm... I'm eating. And I'm like, oh, it tastes good. I said, what is it? He says, cooey. And I said, what is that? Oh, it's guinea pig. You know those friendly little things that. Oh my goodness. That, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. C U Y. That's that's what it is. Yeah. And Mark, if we go to Ecuador or Colombia, they have a delicacy that looks like a rat. It's not quite rat. It's sort of like a mixture of rat and uh, and guinea pigs. But they consider that to be a delicacy. Well, well, yeah, I, I, I understand that. But here's my thing. 
when you start letting people into this country that want to eat a cat or a dog, I have a problem with that. <laughs> I agree. You're not the no, only I mean, one. I, You're not the only one. I mean, I, 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 that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I'm, my cat is staring at me now, saying, <laughs> "Don't, don't talk about me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, I, it, I don't know if you've seen Mark. There are videos out there of cats and dogs who are staring into the cell phone cameras that people then end up posting on this thread that react to what President Donald Trump was saying. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. The videos are very funny because, Mark, when the cats or the dogs hear the voice of Trump, they actually take notice, and then when he hears, when Trump says they're eating them, they run away. <laughs> they are funny videos. Now, I know some of it is staged, but I'll bet you some of it is real, because, you know, our cats, Nancy, some of them understand us when we're talking to them. They're highly intelligent. I can actually see. Can I hear that one more time? Imagine if you were a dog or a cat and you were just listening to this. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. And you see the dogs and the cats running away, Mark. <laughs> well... No, my cat's out like a light. She's she's going on fifteen, so she knows I'm not going to eat her. Uh, <laughs> living in Bayonne is not the greatest thing. Uh, we haven't had anything like that happen yet. Ah, but to me, Mark, Bayonne is the gateway to the world. You pass that old Standard Oil refinery of the Rockefellers that is now one of the largest cruise line locations in the world. And when you leave Bayonne and you're out there in the Atlantic, that's the last piece of America you see. What We should move to Bayonne, New Jersey, Nancy. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think so. Whoa, whoa, wait. Those, those, are re those are our best listeners in Bayonne. Well, okay. I know. I, I was hoping for like a beach or something. Beach? How about Hamilton Beach next to Howard Beach and Broad Channel? Well, actually, well, Rockaways is pretty nice. Oh, now you want to move next to Sid Rosenberg. No, no, like the other side of the island. The other side of the Oh, you mean Breezy Point? <laughs> I don't Far know. Rockaway? I just want to go to a beach. Bayswater? Long Beach. Maybe you're talking Long Beach. I don't where think I'm talking any of those people. I want blue water like I can swim in. I want to be able to see where my feet are. Where our great colleague Bernard McGurk raised his family, unfortunately passed away from prostate cancer. Oh, there are so many When we beaches. took that, that, that speed ferry, I was so mortified because the water... Yeah, we had to get off the speed ferry. Nancy was not going to make it to the Ferry Hawks game in Staten Island without heave hoeing everything overboard. No, it had everything to do with the water. It's like it, it was probably one of the most mortifying things to be in the middle of that water. If if it was a it was like a blue ocean, I would have been fine. No worries. Yeah, so I don't think you want to live by Jamaica Bay. I <laughs> lived by Jamaica Bay, Nancy. We'll we'll save that for another day. <laughs> W-A-B-C. Talk Radio 77 W-A-B-C. The Curtis Sliwa Show presents Curtis's Ark with Nancy Sliwa. Now, with Nancy Sliwa, here's Curtis Sliwa. And then, Nancy, another animal issue has emerged. It was a old comment made by J.D. Vance. When he was, I believe, U.S. Senator in Ohio with Tucker Carlson when he was on the Fox News Channel. And it had to do with childless 
cat ladies. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? And somehow cats were involved in that. Uh, cats, yeah. cats, dogs, and animals seem to be at the epicenter in many aspects of this presidential campaign. Yeah, I'm not really sure why you want to encourage hating on cats or animals in general. It's kind of a bad move. Well, remember, he's, uh, his pride is he's a hillbilly. Is he? No. That is so bogus. He may have grown up in hillbilly land, which he did, but he went to Yale University, then went to Silicon Valley in California, made millions of dollars. The guy's not a hillbilly, but he's got to act like a hillbilly. Let's go to Joanne, who's calling from Queens. Welcome to the Animal Welfare Hour here at WABC, Joanne. Yes, um, this issue of people who hide behind their religion, they have the right to barbecue, mail, they'll be using children next. We have a humane slaughter law, and these animals, these skinny pigs are not supposed to be tortured like they do, you can find online in Peru. On 107th Street and Northern Boulevard in Queens, Outside an Ecuadorian restaurant, they are barbecuing guinea pigs. Now, you want to do something about that. They are breaking the law in more ways. All right. So, uh, to be hundred and humanely. Right. So, 107th, Joanne, and Northern Boulevard, a uh, Ecuadorian and, restaurant. That would make sense because that is considered a delicacy in uh, Ecuador. We will definitely be there. I have guardian angels in that area of Corona, Elmhurst, and Jackson Heights. Right. One other thing, Curtis. I sent Nancy a letter. There's a hearing coming up the end of the month. We have in Jackson Heights a horrible hoarder named Elizabeth Grant. It went viral. For the fourth time, they found so many animals abused, you cannot believe. When the cops went there on the third time, she hits the head, the cop on the head. She gets a lawyer, and she gets away with it. Now, she's responsible for more animal abuse Animal hoarder Elizabeth Grant. There's a hearing at the DA at the end of the month. Please let Nancy get the letter I sent to Brooklyn about this. Sure. And uh, the woman's last name, who is the hoarder? Elizabeth Grant. Fourth time, 100 animals. I mean, she steals these animals, breaks her legs. She's a sicko hoarder that this time she must go to jail. Or worse. Understood. Understood. Uh, Nancy will definitely be on that. And that's what our animal welfare program does. Thank you, Joanne, for sending the uh, letter to our Brooklyn headquarters. Uh, yeah, and, th and these things are disgusting because this is why the animals continue to be allowed to, you know, they're abused. This person is brought up on multiple charges multiple times. How are they continuing to have animals? This is... This person needs to be in jail. This is ridiculous. If not, disgusting. a psychiatric facility to deal with whatever has caused her to want to torture animals. Yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, I, I, I'm all for helping her, but let's just help the animals first. They're actually the innocent ones. Oh, absolutely. So you'll you'll stay on top of this case, Nancy? Yes. This, mm, and yes. thank you. Thank you, Joanne, for bringing that to our attention. And people... <laughs> Uh, want to send you more information about animal welfare issues, how can they do that, Nancy? Protectouranimals.org. Protectouranimals.org. Let's go to Sandra, who's calling from New Jersey. Your turn to be heard here at WABC, Sandra. Well, thinking about the guinea pigs, when I went to Peru, I went on this island. It was called Reed Island, and they had all these huts. And I remember one hut had guinea pigs in them. And I remember I didn't want to look in that hut because I knew what they were going to do with them. So sad. But I'm not going to say I went for a walk the other night 
with my friend. We went to Whole Foods on the water in New Jersey, in Edgewater, and they have the geese there. This one geese, Goose, came over to me, beautiful, I thought, big eyes. He came right over to me, not afraid at all. I could have pet him if I, if I wanted to, but I didn't. And he kept looking at me, and I kept looking at him, and I was thinking of how someone could grab him by the neck and do what they do, and it broke my heart. And I went into the, the whole wheat cereal, <laughs> and my friend said, all right, give him some of your cereal, and I did, and all the other little guys came around too. I just can't understand how anyone can hurt a creature like that. And then I also want to say, someone sent me two videos of cats in Haiti that were tortured. I could see them doing it. I, I don't know how I managed to watch it, but I did. So then I say to myself, yeah, it's possible for these people who do that there because they're very poor or whatever, or rituals, they'll come here and they'll do it here too. So I don't doubt what Donald Trump said about the animals being stolen and, 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 and tortured. I'm, I'm sure it happened. And, and I'm brokenhearted, Nancy. I, I think you're so sweet, and I often wonder how you and Curtis, I bet you two never fight because you are the most sweetest, easygoing person, Nancy. Thank you so much. Oh, you mentioned President Donald Trump. In Springfield... They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. Mm. That has become one of the themes of this campaign. You have some who are saying, knock it off, Donald Trump. Focus on... Uh, Inflation, the economy, migrants, the top three issues that play to his agenda. And don't talk about animals being eaten in Springfield. What say you, uh, Nancy, as the head of the Guardian Angel Animal Welfare Program? Whether they are doing that to confirm it? No. Uh, whether Trump should be making it a primary well, issue. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a good question. It, I mean, certainly, um, you know, animal rights is near and dear to me. So I appreciate any time, you know, someone standing up for them. You know, I I think it, I think we got to go a little bit further than that. So, you know, unfortunately, living in a society where people eat animals, it's it gets a little harder to really make that moral claim that some animals are better than others. But you know, there are pets, so that's. You know, something that's really offensive to our culture. But, you know, realistically, I think we'd do better off just not eating any animals. Then we don't have to worry about these animals being tortured at all. But that's way, way far off that. Let's go to Michael in Manhattan. Your turn to be heard here on the Animal Welfare Hour at WABC. Michael. Uh, good evening, Nancy. Good evening, Curtis. It's a great honor to speak to the two of you who are very humane, compassionate people. God bless you. I have a, uh, an article I read in the AM paper about animals and the animal shelters, but I just wanted to say about this political thing you were talking about. I think Donald Trump is working like a dog in order to get elected, and J.D. Vance is, is a catastrophe. I guess that's my feeble effort to be humorous. No, no I, I look, <laughs> I've... I've <laughs> Shared uh, that same opinion that J.D. Vance was not ready for prime time. It's just I've never seen before in the, the lead up to a national campaign in the conversation uh, between the candidates and the voters <clears throat> that animal issues have been brought so far to the uh, forefront. And I think a lot of it, Michael, is. The politicians are reacting to the most recent polls. The Pew Research Center indicated that 97% of Americans, it didn't matter whether they were for Harris or Trump or apolitical, view animals who live with them as their family members now. That never occurred before. And I think that is the result of what happened during the lockdown and pandemic when in many instances, your animals were with you indoors all the time. People developed a fondness, a bond with their animals that had never before previously existed for some. 
Well, uh, Curtis, I, did, I, just, I, I really wanted to focus on this article I read in the AM Metro paper explaining why so many people are surrendering their animals because the, according to this article in the AM Metro paper, the cost of going to a veterinarian has increased 60% over the last 10 years, and people making less than $75,000 a year are struggling to afford the ownership of a pet. And it said here that 7,440 animals were turned in to the Animal Care and Control Center between January and May of this year. I mean, in other words, people can't afford the, uh, the you know, the pet food, the cat litter, and then the animal, the veterinarian bills. They just can't afford to 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 pay the expense of a veterinarian, and so they're surrendering their animals. Isn't there something we can do about that? Absolutely, uh, Michael. When I ran for mayor. Uh, Nancy, you were side by side with me. We had proposed a snap card for those who had pets who were finding it very financially um, inopportune uh, to have the pet. For instance, they may have had a medical emergency or uh, all of a sudden their financial uh, condition had changed. And now they had to make a determination as to whether they eat, their family members eat or the pet eats. And so they were surrendering uh, uh, their their beloved animals to the the animal care and control uh, center. Remember, we stood outside. We encouraged them. Don't don't surrender your animal. There's a very good likelihood if they can't foster out that animal, if they can't adopt it out, they're going to kill that animal. They're going to destroy it. They're going to euthanize it. The moment I said that, remember how many people said, "Well, no, we're not surrendering our animal." That didn't answer, though, the question of when you don't have the money. So I had proposed when I ran for mayor, and and we'll do it again, that we have a snap card for those who want to be able to continue to take care of their pet, their family member, but they need a little help with the bills. Uh, Food especially, trips to the vet, astronomical to some, uh, and uh, it can be done. And I think you will find the mass majority of the the electorate, both Democrats and Republicans, are going to be in support of that. I mean, you, you have people who can, if they have a, an issue, if they go into the emergency room, right, that so theoretically everyone's supposed to get helped. I and mean, the fact that there's no sort of similar safety net for animals is definitely a problem. People will wait much longer than they need to or they should to even address a problem. And then sometimes it'll get to the point where it's beyond helping the animal. So this idea of having it... Um, you know, really embedded in our society that there is some sort of, a, you know, safety net. But again, I, you know, I, th- I think it also even extends to things like health insurance. I mean, I, I don't see why it's so difficult to have an element of health insurance, even on human health insurance, where it's like it's covering one kid, two kids. Okay, what about an animal? What about a pet? I mean, things like that. I think you want to make it a lot easier. And some of the industries you need to bolster up. I mean, you have Adams who doubles down on these really goofy industries like AI, and, you know, all this technology, but you have real needs. And one of them is having uh, medical care for animals. So veterinarians, how come, you know, that isn't something that's bolstered a lot more, even hands on, because this is something that really prevents um, people from even being able to take them there. There's not as many veterinarians as you need and more people have animals. So, you know, focusing on the shifts and changes in society and where animals fall into society there is a reason why, you know, there's not enough leverage to really make it, um, you know, sort of affordable for most people. That's why you need to embrace a lot more of this reality. By the way, uh, warming up in the bullpen is Dominic Carter will be joining uh, our audience from uh, one, excuse me, 11 to 1 as he does each uh, Sunday evening. And then followed by the Mama Luke Frank Morano from 1 to 5. Boy, both of them are going to be pissed because, Nancy, you have elevated our team at the annual run and walk of the Tunnel to Towers charity event next Sunday, next Sunday morning. We are the leaders of the pack here amongst all of our colleagues. More people have contributed to want to join us in this great charity, which is donated uh, It's time, it's energy and resource this year to find a home for every veteran who's living in the streets, subways, and parks. 
That is a disgraziata that our government would allow that and meantime take care of migrants. But uh, Tunnel the Tower is trying to fill in the gap. So if you'd like to join Nancy, she seems to be the choice of our audience. People I see here as I'm reading the thread to the people who have actually signed up for our team in this Tunnel the Tower Walk and Run at wabcradio.com slash walk. That's wabcradio.com slash and walk. Seem to be doing it because they want to be with you, Nancy. You're like the enigma. They already know Dominic. They certainly know the Mama Luke. And they're commenting that, yeah, Curtis, you're too overexposed. You're everywhere. We've probably met you four or five times this year alone. We don't need to see any more of you. And stop giving out your damn business cards. I can't tell you how many people. I got enough already. All right. But it's a different one. This one is different. We just made this for the San Gennaro Festival. We will have it for the Tunnel to Tower walk and run next Sunday, the 29th. It's a picture of Nancy. Nancy Sliwa for First Lady of NYC. Protect NYC Animals. And green space now. And the analytics on that blew up. People are like, oh, wow. Nancy, yeah, Nancy. They're going to want to run you for mayor. Can I be your public advocate? Well, I'll, 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 put, I'll give you an interview. WABC. Talk Radio 77 WABC. The Curtis Lewa Show presents Curtis's Ark with Nancy Sliwa. Now, with Nancy Sliwa, here's Curtis Sliwa. To the phones we go. Uh, Pat in New Jersey, your turn to be heard here at WABC, Pat. Hello, I hope you can hear me because I have to keep it. My cord is broke on my phone. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, Pat. I very well. I'm listening to the callers calling in and about the topic of animals. I wanted you to to know that I've been made aware um, because I live near a state park and people drop their animals off and it's awfully costly to feed them. And I was told there's a food pantry just like there is for people, for animals. And also, I don't know if I can name this, but there's a company that I go through to have sent for my cat and they told me they're so committed to the care of animals that they're opening up veterinary clinics yeah well no feel free to share that information with us well chewy and what is it that they are devoted to doing well chewy is where you can order all kinds of animal products and when i was laid up it was so great because within two days items were delivered to my door and so I asked them one day, I said, do you have uh, any kind of resources for people who are finding it hard to feed animals? And they said to me about the food pantry for animals and also about Chewy opening up veterinary clinics to keep it costly for people to take care of their animals. No, that is an excellent idea. It's, it is a concept whose time has come. Now that, yes. now that so many people have identified themselves as being animal lovers, feeling that the pets in their home are actually family members, it's time that this transition has taken place, Pat. Four years ago, it didn't take place. Uh, three years ago, when I ran for mayor, people made fun of us, Nancy, because we devote so much time to the care of cats, especially rescuing them before They get destroyed in the animal care and control shelters. And I notice a lot more people now understanding what we've been doing and identifying with that because they went through the lockdown and pandemic. And the person, well, the people that were most important to them were their animals. Yeah, and I never really understood the concept of not wanting to save the animals or help them to the best of your ability. So... I think it's also educating people on the realities of the situation. I mean, you need to come in and have individuals who are going to help these animals because, unfortunately, they kill shelters. They put them down so quickly, and a lot of them don't have a chance. And uh, let me just recap. uh, Before Dominic Carter comes on, we have made a commitment to all of you, made the commitment to our owner-operator, John Katsimatidis, who uh, 
is also so interested in what's going on in Springfield, Ohio, the truth of what is going on. And uh, because Donald Trump has made it issue number one involving what is happening to the animals. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. So by this time next week, we'll have a full detailed report for you. Nancy is going to be working on that aspect of the truth, the veracity, whether it's being embellished, whether it's being uh, downplayed. We'll be able to tell you the full extent of that before Donald Trump's trip to Springfield. I am asking the Cleveland Guardian Angels, uh, which are about three hours away, to drive in also to check on the claims uh, of how animals are being treated, if they're being mistreated, tortured, or prepared for uh, a dinner table to let us know, and also in terms of the migrants, what they're doing there, the Haitians. Uh, And then I will work on the aspect of the immigrants, the illegal aliens, the Haitians, because I get along really well with Haitians. As I said, in uh, the neighborhood I was raised in, uh, my parish, Our Lady of Miracles now, if it weren't for the Haitians there, there would probably be nobody in the uh, pews for the regular services that take place on a Sunday. English service, you can roll a Brunswick bowling ball through the church and you wouldn't hit anyone. A few hours later, you have the Creole uh, church service and the place is packed to the rafters. These are the the Haitians uh, who uh, love uh, the Catholic faith, but also sometimes they are um, sort of out there practicing voodoo in a combination of the two which I've also seen uh, from Puerto Ricans uh, who are hardcore Catholics, but also they dabble in Santeria. That's why they're in Botanicas looking to purchase uh, certain potions, lotions, statues, things that very much identify with the Roman Catholic Church, but they're not Catholic. So, Nancy, you'll take care of your end. I'll take care of my end, and both of us will be visiting Howard Beach and Broad Channel, the beaches along Jamaica, where there have been animal sacrifice, some of it uh, by people stealing the seagulls, trying to pluck them and cook them and eat them, and others of it that are part of some kind of religious ceremony involving animal worship. We don't just talk about things here at Animal Welfare. We get stuff done.